Ok. So. We have seen a set of heuristics, uh, but how can we use them? So obviously we can use them to design new, new technology, new user interfaces. Uh, but in this course, we will use these heuristics to evaluate an existing platform, and in particular the platform that you selected in the first uh, uh, assignment. Uh, but again, heuristics can be used in two ways, for designing new solutions or to critique existing solutions. Um, so let's skip these slides. Basically here it's an introduction of all the different evaluation techniques that we can use in XCI. Um, we can have evaluation in the lab or in the field. Uh, we can involve end users, like with interviews uh, or surveys, um, but we can also have expert evaluation, and heuristic evaluation is a kind of expert evaluation during which uh, experts um, um, check a design according to some principles, to some, some heuristics. Um, and then we can also have automated uh, evaluation, like simulation and, uh, of a software, uh, and uh, formal evaluation, uh, and so on. Um, obviously, um, the design process in XCI is an uh, iterative process. So during this design process, you will probably need to apply different kind of evaluation and through each evaluation you can learn b different things and some evaluation are mm, suitable at the beginning of the uh, design process for example we started this course with interviews and surveys to analyze a problem and extract some requirements other evaluation are suitable instead at the end of the design process for example when you implement something an artifact a tool an interface you would probably need a final in-the-field evaluation to try the application, the interface with real users. Uh, lab studies, so in lab studies users are taken out of their normal environment to take part in a control test. Uh, so uh, they are typically adopted in the early stages of the, of the design process um, because you don't need a final implementation for a lab study, you can control everything, you can control the environment, the context, uh, and so you can also have a prototype that is probably not complete, uh, but you can simulate something, you can control everything in a lab uh, environment. Um, and it's also suitable when you have to test uh, an artifact uh, in dangerous environments, uh, okay? For example, in the medical domain, in the aerospace domain, okay, so before sending uh, an astronaut uh, in the space, we can test our interface in the lab, okay? Uh, obviously, you also have some drawbacks. Uh, you lack the context, the real context that is just simulated. Uh, there is also this kind of unnatural situations that may lead to biases. So uh, the participant is in the lab and the participant knows that, he is, that there is someone that is observing him, is observing her, and so this may create, uh, this may lead to biases in the participant answers. And it's obviously not suitable for all the tasks. So there are some tasks that can be tested uh, only in the field. For example, if you are developing uh, uh, health mobile application that uh, for running, for example, this is something that you probably cannot test in the lab, uh, but you need to test uh, in the wild. In the wild, so field studies, um, so we ask participants to install, for example, our application and to try it uh, in uh, his or in her normal activities. So we have an open nature, we have the real context, uh, and users are in their natural environment. But, of course, you have a low degree of control. Uh, for example, if your app stops working, 
you cannot co you cannot control this. Uh, you also have higher costs because uh, you need uh, a working implementation, uh, of course, and you also need probably to recruit more participants, uh, and you also have a longer duration. So a lab study typically lasts one hour, um, and in the wild study typically lasts two weeks, one month. And finally, we have expert evaluations uh, um, that are based on the evaluation of some experts. So in the next assignment, you will take the role of an expert, of an XCI expert, uh, not an XCI expert, of a digital well-being expert, and you will try to analyze an, an existing platform according to the heuristics that we have just seen. Um, these kind of evaluations are useful uh, to identify um, any areas that are likely to cause difficulties uh, because they violate some principles, some guidelines like the digital well-being heuristics. So we can exclude the easy to solve problems before recruiting uh, real participants. Um, so this evaluation can be used at any stage in the development process. Uh, it is relatively cheap. Uh, you don't need to recruit any participants. Uh, however, it doesn't assess the actual use of the system from, uh, and the use of the system of your target population. So let's focus on this specific uh, evaluation strategy, uh, an expert technique, heuristic evaluation. So experts that check potential issues on a design uh, by referring to a set of uh, heuristic of principles. Um, again, this kind of technique can be used at different stages of the design process uh, before user testing to save effort and again solve the easy to solve problems. Uh, before redesigning, uh, for example, let's imagine you have two prototypes uh, and you have to decide which prototype uh, is better okay, for you you can conduct an heuristic evaluation to, to decide uh, which, which uh, uh, prototype is better. It can also be used to generate evidence for problems that are known or suspected. Maybe you have a mobile application and you are receiving uh, a lot of bad, very bad reviews. Um, so you can conduct an heuristic evaluation to understand if these reviews are uh, reasonable or, or not, for example and so on. This method was developed by Jakob Nielsen uh, and it's a quite established method. Um, it is a structured design critique uh, because the expert is going to critique your design or, uh, an, or, or the design of another platform using a set of simple and, and general heuristic um, and is a cheap method because uh, it's demonstrated that three to five experts are sufficient to identify most of the usability problems or digital well-being problems in our case. Um, and again, the original goal was to find usability problems in a design, uh, but we are going to exploit it to find digital well-being problems. So the basic idea is to define a set of heuristics or principles um, and then give those heuristics to a group of experts. Um, each expert individually will use the heuristics and some tasks to be performed on the, on the design, on the interface, to look for possible problems. Uh, so experts work firstly independently uh, so each expert will find different problems uh, and at the end there is an agreement phase in which the group of experts try to uh, share the results and produce a joint uh, report. Okay, so maybe I identified a problem, you two, uh, so we try to create a unique problem, maybe another expert have identified a, an additional set of problems and we try to merge them together. Um, so what we find is a set of violations of the heuristics 
um, that can then be communicated to the design team, uh, to Facebook, uh, YouTube in this case, um, asking them to fix this kind of problems in future um, release. Uh, Nielsen, of course, proposed a set of 10 well-known heuristic rules uh, that are good at finding most design problems uh, about usability. Um, but in specific contexts like digital well-being, new heuristics can be, of course, defined. Um, and also some heuristics can also be ignored depending on, on the context in which we are using this evaluation technique. So, phases of an heuristic evaluation. Um, first of all, there is this, sometimes there is this uh, pre-evaluation training, uh, because again, it's um, expert review. Uh, so let's imagine you are um, testing, uh, you are an HCI expert and you are testing an application in the medical domain, okay? So probably you will need some, some training before conducting the evaluation to know the domain, the background information of the medical domain, at least in the context of this uh, given application, okay? Um, because you are going to impersonate, let's say, uh, a user of this application. Maybe this application is for doctors, so you need to know at least some, some background information on the topic. Then there is the individual evaluation uh, that typically lasts one hour. You have some tasks to perform on the interface. You perform these tasks and every time you, you spot some violation of a given heuristic, you note down the violation uh, on a sheet of paper. Or In noting down this violation, you should use a severity rating so you assign a severity level to each violation that you found, uh, first individually and then uh, uh, with the team of experts. So at the end there is this agreement phase, all the experts meet together and try to create a joint report. So first of all you need to define a set of tasks that the evaluators should uh, analyze. Um, and for each task, the evaluation, the evaluator um, should try the task several times on the interface and inspect the elements uh, in, the, in the UI. Um, this can happen on the real design, as in our case, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, or also on a prototype, of course. Um, and uh, at each step, you check the design according to each of the heuristics. So you can first get a general feeling of the interaction flow, uh, and then you can also focus on specific portion, on specific part of the, of the design, like specific buttons, specific uh, functionality, uh, and so on. Uh, okay, y you should take notes in this process. Uh, and again, the output is a list of uh, violations with a severity with a severity rating. Okay, where problems may be found, this is mostly related to uh, usability problems, but probably it applies also to our domain. Uh, problems can be on a single location of the user interface, a button or a given functionality. Um, a problem can be related to the overall structure of the application uh, or something that is missing. It, it can also uh, be a problem and so on. So you can really find different, different problems uh, with different levels of uh, severity. <coughs> So the first step is defining uh, uh, tasks to be performed during the evaluation. Uh, so what is a task, in your opinion? Can you make an example of a task that you can perform on a digital interface?
Yeah. Obviously, here you, you already have the answer. Okay. Okay, yeah, this could be an example, a good example of a task. Uh, so it's a goal uh, together with some uh, actions. So it's not too specific. Okay, so clicking on a button is not a task. Uh, it's more generic, like creating a network on, on Facebook. Uh, this could be an example. So something that could be achieved through a set of actions um, and the description of the task should not include any details on how to perform these tasks, okay? Um, so, um, a task says what a person wants to do, not how, this is important, um, and sh a task should describe a complete goal, okay? So, can I ask? Yeah. Yeah. Like the goal is more abstract. So yeah, exactly. The goal is the final state of the application that you want to achieve. Um, and yeah, I agree with you, it's probably more abstract. Uh, a task instead is um, also includes implicitly the set of actions that you need to achieve a particular goal. Um, yeah, this is, for example, uh, a task, a generic task not related to our domain, uh, but a task could be clean the house, for example, and you can divide this task in different steps, right? Um, and to achieve this, this task, I can also use different artifacts. Okay, clearly, but I think it's quite clear. We can, we can, uh, and also to answer your question, um, a task can also be related to different goals. Okay, so for example, if the task is to clean the house, uh, I can relate this task to different uh, goals. For example, I can have a narrow goal, removing dust, but I can also have a wide goal, having a satisfying evening. Okay, so again, uh, this is another distinction between tasks and, and goals. Okay, so here are, are a set of examples of good tasks more related to our uh, technological domain. So let's imagine we want to perform some evaluation of the Uber app. Okay, so we need some tasks to try the application. Uh, and here I listed three different tasks, one simple, one moderate, and one complex. The simple task is signaling for a ride, okay? Why is it simple? Because it doesn't require a lot of actions? Yeah, this is uh, a possible reason. It doesn't require a, po uh, a lot of actions. But there is also another reason um, that differentiates between simple and complex tasks in this case and in general. Yeah, exactly. I, it's probably the main feature of the app. So I, it's simple because it is the most common task on, on this app. Moderate task, reach out to the driver to get a forgotten object. Okay? This probably requires uh, more actions, probably, uh, and it is also less common, probably. And then the complex task, become a driver for Uber. This is complex because, again, it's less common and it surely requires a lot of actions, including actions that are not strictly related to the usage of the app, okay? And these instead are uh, a set of bad tasks for the same application. Open the app and <coughs> tap on travel. Is it a task? Why is it bad? Yeah, it's probably an action. Uh, and if, it, if it's a task, you are suggesting how to perform it. So basically, it's not useful for evaluating the application. I already know that I just have to open the app and click on a given button. Okay. 
uh, another example go into your account settings check the messages and then send a present again we are suggesting the actions uh, uh, within the task description okay so it's probably a bad task in this case okay um, some information background information about uh, the uh, strategy in general um, again it's a cheap evaluation strategy because it requires just three to five evaluators to find uh, most of the problems uh, in, um, in a design uh, and Nielsen uh, tried to conduct different experiments to, to understand which is this magic number so the number of evaluators that you need to find most of, of, the, pro of the problems uh, so obviously different evaluators will find different problems and there will be substantial amount of uh, non-overlap um, as you can see here Nielsen uh, uh, tried to perform uh, an experiment with 19 evaluators uh, um, asking them to evaluate an interface with 16 usability problems uh, and as you can see there are some successful evaluators that found a lot of problems here with uh, some overlap and there are some unsuccessful evaluators that uh, only find only um, found the easy to solve problems okay and as you can see probably with three to five evaluators you already have found most of of the problems um, there is also this kind of uh, chart that um, compares the number of evaluators with the proportions of usability problems found um, as you can see this ratio is quite linear at the beginning but then this ratio drops after after five evaluators so it's probably better to stop here you already uh, found 75 percent of problems uh, so I if you double the number of participants you only get a small uh, amount of benefit in terms of uh, problems found and there is also the cost obviously uh, because uh, recruiting more participants cost uh, as a cost so it's pro the magic number I is probably five the severity rating um, obviously designers need to allocate uh, the most resources to fix the most serious problems so we need to understand uh, what are the violations that are uh, more severe. Uh, se severity is a combination of three things mainly. Uh, the frequency of the problem. So is it a common problem? Is it present on all the screens of the interface? Or is it just present on the home page, for example? Then impact. The impact of the problem is also uh, important. Is it easy to overcome for the user or is it difficult? Okay. And then persistence. Is it a one-time problem or is it persistent? Okay. Maybe with an interaction, with a click, there is a problem, but then, but then with this click, the problem disappears. Uh, maybe there are other problems that happen every time the user click a given button, for example. So persistence. So when reasoning about severity, you should take into account these three factors. Um, and the goal is to define a combined severity rating. And this is the scale proposed by Nielsen. Uh, again, about usability problems, but we can easily generalize it to our context. Uh, a scale from zero to four, zero is no problem. Um, and this is not used in the individual phase, of course, because, because if it's not a problem, you will not report it, but is sometimes used in the agreement phase. So maybe an evaluator found a problem um, and another evaluator gives zero as a severity rating in this agreement phase. And then you, you must decide if you are going to include this violation in the report or not. 
Then there are cosmetic problems um, that need to be fixed unless extra time is available on the project. So it's a cosmetic problem only. Um, you are asking the designers to solve this problem just if there is extra time. Otherwise, uh, the application can, can work even with this kind of, of cosmetic problems. Then two minor usability problems. In our case, will be minor digital well-being violation, let's say. Uh, so low priority problems, then major usability problems. These problems are important to fix, so they should be given high priority. So uh, before moving on with the implementation, the design team should really try to fix these problems. And then number four, usability catastrophe. Okay, so uh, it's imperative to fix these uh, problems. Uh, before the product can be released. Again, this is um, a severity rating scale that we can, in some ways, uh, generalize to, to our digital well-being topic. And again, it's important to consider both the, the three factors, frequency, persistence, and, and impact. Again, there is this uh, agreement phase in which you will uh, try to give a combined severity rating. Uh, there are two strategies mainly. You can discuss within your group and decide uh, and agree on a consensus ranking. Or if you uh, find the same problem, you can also just compute the average of your scores. So these are two alternative strategies. And finally, uh, ideally, there is this debriefing session with uh, the design team. We are not going to, <laughs> to have this debriefing with Mark Zuckerberg or, or the creator of YouTube, of course. But in theory, um, you should also uh, have this debriefing session with the design team during which you can also provide some advice on how to uh, fix the violations that, that you found. OK, we can skip this. If you are interested in the original guidelines um, about usability, you can use the Nielsen Norman group um, to have some details on, on the heuristics specifically designed to find uh, usability problems. But again, heuristic evaluation can be used also in other uh, domains. And this is an example by Microsoft that created these guidelines for human AI interaction. Some of you probably attended the uh, human AI interaction course. We analyzed these kind of guidelines proposed by Microsoft. Here are some examples. So make clear how well the system can do what it can do. So add the user understand how often the AI system may make mistakes. OK? This is the example of a guideline in this, in this field. And there are also some practical examples. Uh, here, for example, the recommender in Apple Music uses language such as we think you will like to communicate uncertainty, OK? Another example, mitigate social biases. En ensure that the AI system language and behaviors do not reinforce undesirable and unfair stereotypes and biases. Example, the predictive keyboard for Android suggests both genders when typing a pronoun starting with the letter H, OK? So again, some guidelines uh, and some practical examples. Support efficient correction. Make it easy to edit, refine, or recover when the AI system is wrong. And also in this case, there are some examples. Uh, convey the consequences of user actions. Immediately update or convey how user actions will impact future behaviors of the AI system. And so on. And you can read the paper if you want, but to evaluate these guidelines, uh, they 
conducted an heuristic evaluation. Um, so each participant was assigned to a feature uh, exploiting AI of a particular product. Um, and they were asked to find examples of violations uh, of each uh, guideline. Okay? So it's another example of heuristic evaluation in another context. And these are some charts extracted from uh, the paper. And that's it. Okay? Any questions on, the, on this specific uh, strategy? Again, we are going to use it in the next assignment. Uh, you will conduct here um, an heuristic evaluation. So you will firstly work independently. So you will uh, produce an individual report. It's not a report. You will list uh, the violations that you will find in, in the interface that you selected in the first assignment. And then you will perform this agreement phase and the output of the assignment will, will be this joint report uh, with a set of violations uh, for a given digital service. Okay, we, we, I think we can take the break now and then you will have some time to uh, finish your second assignment and in the last hour uh, you will present uh, your work.